the clock has hit zero. And in one of the strangest years in NFL history, Washington changed its culture, changed its name, and went from picking second in the draft to finishing first in their division. The Washington football team has won the NFC East. Welcome into the playoff edition of the game. Julie Donaldson, Santana Moss, and Zach Selby. This is presented by BDO. Hey guys, here we are. We are headed to the postseason division champs, top of the NFC East. Nobody thought we would be here to begin the season. Tana, how does it feel? What do you think? Still feeling good? It, it feels great. I'm ecstatic about it. You know, I, I you know I thought about it coming into the show and saying. You can't put an asterisk to buy because we didn't have a winning season. We're in, and we're the champ. So at the end of the day, I, I care less how we got in. Uh, it feels great. Yeah, I mean, it really wasn't pretty at all in a lot of ways. But, you know, we're very talked about after game. It, it's really fitting that it would be sort of a grinded out sort of sort of affair that this entire season has been, honestly. I mean, they've, they've fought, they've battled. I mean, no one thought they were going to be in this position when they were one in five. But... All of a sudden, here they are because they gave themselves a chance because they believed in themselves. And honestly, like like they've been, like everyone says, you're in the tournament now. And who knows, anything can happen. Okay, let's get straight to it. What we also did not expect to be taking place at this point in the season was the return of Alex Smith. We actually didn't think he'd come back at all. Uh, miraculous that he did. We did expect Terry McLaurin to be a big part of the offense, but for the past few weeks, he's been battling injuries with his ankles. But man, talk about toughing it out. Coach Rivera said he saw him running a 100-yard dash and said, oh yeah, he's good to go. Santana, first off, just how important it is to understand what Alex Smith brings to this offense and that Terry McLaurin was able to go with that high ankle sprain, toughing it out. You know, it's great just to see that both of those guys um, was able to play this game and both of them meant so much and to us not, you know, being in the record books for the only team to uh, not score on the first uh, drive of a game for the 2020 season. You know, I said on the broadcast earlier that day that 2021 is going to be a start of new and good good things for this team. And it was great to see them get that score. But it was great to see those guys out there because they mean so much to this offense. So it was only fitting that they was a part of getting that score for us, you know, to start the game out. And Zach, it is time for your Selby stat of the game. And of course, it has something to do with Terry. Yes, it does. So in case for some reason, Terry McLaurin wasn't one of your favorite players, he should be after this game. He fought through a high ankle sprain and had seven receptions for 40 yards in a touchdown. Now, Terry has 2,037 yards in his career so far, which makes him the second player behind Gary Clark to do that in two seasons. He also has 10 games with at least seven receptions in two seasons, which makes him the first player in franchise history to accomplish that feat in that time span. I mean, Terry just wanted to be out there with his teammates. I mean, he was gonna do whatever he could. And that's why he's, he's definitely deserving of being one of the team's captains this year and probably for years to come. Let's get a little bit further into the play of Alex Smith. We were uncertain whether or not he was going to be able to go. This week's Smith read progression is presented by FedEx. He had a couple of touchdowns, also a couple of interceptions. Santana, uh, that opening drive, though, he looked pretty good, but there are stretches in the game where you thought maybe they needed to go to a backup. What did you like from him and what concerned you? You know, one of the things that I uh, pay close attention to is Regardless of the turnovers, Alex Smith still didn't kill us. You know, I mean, he played bad. I mean, it, it didn't look pretty at all. Uh, it's like I almost cringed every time I saw him, you know, take a drop step because I know how that calf can probably be feeling knowing that it wasn't quite all the way healthy. But he didn't all the way kill us. He gave us opportunities and that's all you can ask for. You know, uh, when you're in a situation with a quarterback that uh, at least his pluses are more than his negatives, that's what we get from Alex, you know, this, this whole entire season. So seeing that he was able to go out there and, and um, fight through it and still get, you know, still be productive, I was okay with the performance. Mm, we will wait. He has one last day to get ready because the game is going to be Saturday night at 8.15 against the Bucks at FedEx Field. But just as Smith was able to take control of his play and make adjustments, you have options with your shipments. Use FedEx Delivery Manager to help you take more control over your residential deliveries. 
Uh, let's get to you, Zach, on this. Um, what are your thoughts on where the offense is heading into the season to start the year? Coach Rivera said it might take a good year to get them in sync. Are we ahead of schedule or kind of where you thought we'd be? Well, I think I think they're really on schedule. I mean, they're still growing. I mean, Scott Turner believes that there have been improvements. And I think that's I think that's a fair assessment considering that where the players have grown with Terry and Logan Thomas. I mean, I can tell you right now, if they want to win against the Bucks, they're going to need more than what they had against the Eagles uh, on Sunday. I mean, there's just no other way about it because Tom Brady likes to score and he likes to score a lot of points. So you're going to need more. But I do think it is something that you can build on going forward. The pieces are there with Terry, Logan, and Antonio. You know, the, the long-term future is very promising for this team. We're going to have to see what they do as this team develops. But I think I think there are some good signs there. Santana, Zach mentioned uh, Logan Thomas. Wow, what he's been able to do at the position of tight end. And that touchdown catch was absolutely perfect. A perfect throw, perfect catch as he went up to get it. But you look at the game plan going forward. Do we have the playmakers that can be able to attack the Bucks defense? I believe so. You know, I think one of the things about Logan Thomas, um, he's been more than we expected this year. You know, folks kind of scratched their head about, you know, him being our number one tight end. I've even heard other, you know, radio uh, hosts saying that, hey, he may be a tight end two or three on any other team. But he's been just what we needed. You know, he's a great safety net for the uh, quarterbacks. Uh, and when you think about it, uh, we've been saying we need that next guy next to Terry McLaurin. Well, Logan has been that guy. He's been that guy all the while. So uh, with Terry on the field, and Logan and having, you know, uh, Gibson in the backfield, you know, we have enough firepower. And don't forget J.D. McKissick as well and, and kind of what we're also getting from Cam Sims. I mean, here's the thing. When Alex Smith is back there, like, he does a really good job spreading the ball around. Everybody's going to have their chances to go out there and be able to make plays, um, which is, you know, benefits trying to confuse a defense on which guy are you going to, opposed to it always and only being Terry. Uh, let's do go to the other side of the ball, though, Zach, the defense. Look, we don't do so well against mobile quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts got out two rushing touchdowns, and we're going like, oh, no, we cannot <laughs> lose to this team. But what do you assess the entire all-around defensive effort? Because there were some outstanding plays as well. There definitely were. I mean, it was a little bit hot and cold, though, I will say that. Because, it, you know, Cam Crow had that interception on uh, second drive. But then, you know, some costly penalties led to those led to those touchdowns. The big plays as well. But in that second half, I mean, my goodness, they just shut teams down in the second half. And Ron Rivera even said that after the game. I mean, what, when they do what they need to do. And, you know, Montez and, and Chase had that phenomenal sort of sort of fumble fumble tip play that they have. It reminded me of that play that Jack Del Rio said he saw in practice a few weeks ago. And I mean, when they're on that, when they're on that level, they're playing playoff caliber defense right now. And it gives you confidence knowing that if they're playing like that and they can shut teams down in January in the second half, they can give you a chance to win no matter how the offense is playing. Yeah, I was at that practice. It was fun to watch to see Montez sweat with his seven foot wingspan reach up, tip the ball, Chase Young take advantage. And that's the thing that Sam Mills, the D-line coach said, is you understand those plays could happen at any time because of what Montez Sweat can do, because of what Chase Allen can do, or Chase Young can do, John Allen, Tim Suttle, all of those guys coming together in Santana. The thing is, is he says, you know what? They're not even playing to the best of their abilities. They're still growing together. Would you walk away from this game thinking of them, knowing that they got to get to not necessarily a mobile quarterback, but Mr. Tom Brady. Yeah, one of the things, you know, that stands out to me is just knowing Tom wants to see things clear. He has a rocket still. People say, oh, can he still, you know, put the ball on your chest like he did when he was in New England at 40 plus? Yes, he can. You watch these games, he's throwing missiles. But one of the things Tom wants to see is he want to see a clean picture. He want to see that hole clean enough so he can give that guy the ball at the right spot. So what Tom don't want to do is pat that ball too many times. And if we can cause him to pat a couple of times by disguising things in our secondary, that gives those guys up front enough time to get after them. Tom going against us now, and I like our odds when it comes to talking about our guys up, up front. And those guys, they ready. You heard him. He said he won't Tom. Yeah, Chase Young was saying that Coach Rivera said, yeah, he kind of cringes because it gives him bulletin board material, which you really don't want to give. But at the same time, he goes, he loves it because it shows the passion of the love of the game for Chase Young. He says, those are the kind of guys we want here going forward. Um, as we wrap this segment up, anybody crying over the fact that uh, 
Uh, Doug Peterson decided to say, you know what, Jalen Hurts, have a seat on the bench. In comes former hey, Washington look, quarterback. Subfield. Whatever happens in Philly with Doug Peterson, just let him know he have a home over here with us. I, he's all right with me. Well, here's the thing. The second he went in, D'Angelo Hall, the booth with, with us, was saying, all right, INTs are coming. Sure enough, Cameron Curl got one. Jeremy I, I Reeves called got with one. Him. I called it with him. I called the first one. <laughs> Uh, we're not going to cry. You can only play the team that's out there in front of you. Uh, Sudfeld did close the game out. Thank you very much, Doug Peterson and the Philadelphia Eagles for letting us use your home field for a celebration of the NFC East crown. When we come back here on the game presented by BDO, we're going to go a little bit further into the Bucks and Tom Brady and what Washington needs to do on Saturday night to say, you know what? We came here to spoil the party. Things are a little different this year. Happy holidays! And we wish you a But it's good to know you can count on holiday scratch-offs from the Maryland Lottery. Multiply the cheer. Please play safely and responsibly. Finally home. <sighs> okay, let's go. Mama! Come on. Yeah. Welcome to the final days of Toyotathon. Here for a great deal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the wait is over. Oh, Camry. <gasps> yes. Lease a new 21 RAV for just $2.29 a month or buy one and take 1,000 cash back from Toyota. Or take bonus cash for up to 2,500 cash allowance on a 21 Highlander. You can get a great deal too at Toyotathon, but it all ends January 4th. Toyota, let's go places. DC has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. DC's greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. You know, for me, honestly, and I've said this before in the past, you know, my favorite football memory is, is not one that most people would, would probably commonly pick just based on some of the things I've been able to do in this league. But um, the first play coming back from my third ACL tear, um, it was actually a special teams play. I was a gunner and I went down and I was the first one to make the special team tackle. At, at the gunner spot after recovering and coming back from a third ACL. We're back here at the game presented by BDO, Julie Donaldson, Santana Moss, Zach Selby. Santana, you've been in this situation before, winning the division title, having to get that messaging from the coaching staff to know what you need to do to try to play on. If you were in that locker room, what are the coaches telling those guys? I mean, embrace the moment, you know, first and foremost. Um, understand what it took for them to be where they at today. But just know that all that's out the door now. Now you're in a complete different, you know, different season. You know, the postseason brings you new opportunity and it gives you a clean slate. So whatever it was for you to get here, you know, whatever it was you had to do to get here, you've done that. Now you're here. Now we have to up everything that we did, play at a different level so we can continue to move on. Even Chase Young, being the young leader on this team, and it's really kind of cool to even see like the John Allens following him and saying, okay, what you say, I'm buying into. He says the whole team knows we're on go time. We're still on go, we're not slowing down. Just getting here, that was not the mission. They want to continue playing on. Zach, they've got to do it against a future Hall of Famer. Yes. Um, we already mentioned that Chase is looking forward to trying to go after him and take him down. Uh, 41 career playoff games for Mr. Tom, terrific. But in the NFC East, he's mm, he struggles a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I'll give you some even more. So records don't mean everything, but just consider this: Brady is three and four on the road in his career in the playoffs, and he's only been in a wild card game twice since 2009. Both of them ended up in losses. But the biggest thing that they're gonna have to do to make that happen is 
they're gonna have to get to him because let me tell you something tom brady is not a cool spry 37 years old anymore he needs to he, he needs to have a clean pocket to operate and whenever he's met that pressure he's not been as good a, as he has been in the past one in three against teams in the nfc east in the postseason santana though you've got one of the best quarterbacks in the game going to a lot of the best wide receivers um, and tight ends as well in the game. Tell us a little bit about his receiving core and how we can defend them. Well, first of all, that receiving core is phenomenal. You know, I mean, honestly, he has all the weapons you can, you know, possibly ask for. You know, Evans is phenomenal. He hurt himself and he might not be able to go, who knows, but guess who his backup is? Antonio Brown. I think Antonio, when you really want to think about it, you know, if he didn't have the little mishap that he had the last few years, he will still be considered the number one receiver in this league. You see what he's doing now. He's just starting to get us, you know, you know, uh, feel himself a little bit. So we don't have to play, you know, uh, the sec. We don't have to be, you know, uh, great in the secondary. All we have to do is do our jobs. And I think, you know, one of the great, the uh, good things about our guys is that they always there. So just make sure that we have a great package together where we're not going to allow Tom to have, you know, clean, clean views and, and open guys. If you, like I said before, if you just be disruptive up front and make him have to get rid of that football quick, then that favors, you know, on our side and we can sit there and make him pat that ball a couple of times because if he can just sit back there comfortably and pick us apart and it'll be a long day. A lot of work to be done heading into this game. I'm going to leave with this all important question though, guys, Zach, is it white on white? Is that what it's got to be? I think so. The three and zero so far this year with the white and white. I know Rivera wants to, to stick to tradition, but the tradition so far in the white and whites is they win. So I say why not? Tana. That's a tough one. You know, I, I try not to. You know, I'm a superstitious person, so I try not to look at it and say when it comes to um, our uniforms. But honestly, it's a home game for us, so. Uh, whatever we won at home with this year, let's let's try to do it again. But if we go, you know, go with white on white, I won't be mad at you. I kind of wish that the burgundy on burgundy went well, because that would have been a yeah, good yeah. look. I like the that solids. Was favorite, that was my favorite color when we wore it and we lost. And I said, you know what, screw that. Don't, 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 don't let me wear that again. So <laughs> if it's white, hey, if it's white on white, let's keep wearing it, you know? Well, Coach Rivera said he wanted to save the white on white for big games, none bigger, although we've had quite a few times of that uh, this season. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us on the game presented by BDO. For Zach Selby and 8 to the 9, Santana Moss, I'm Julie Donaldson. You can find the show on our WashingtonFootball.com website and also on our YouTube channel. Subscribe, like it, leave your comments. Let us know your feelings because we're hoping to be bringing you even more this season. Honda, we take the holidays seriously. Both with serious rugged performance and serious capability. So while others might be dreaming of winter wonderlands, you could be shattering expectations with the best value of the season. Now's the best time to get into a new Honda. KBB.com's best value brand for 2020. Visit Happy Honda Days at your local Honda dealer or shop online to get a great offer on the Pilot. The landscape has changed, and not for the last time. The rules of business are being reinvented with a more flexible workforce, by embracing innovation, by looking not only at current opportunities, but ahead to future ones. Resilience is the ability to pivot again and again for whatever happens next. People who know, know BDO. D.C. has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. D.C.'s greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. Yeah, things are a little different this year. Happy holidays! And we wish you a But it's good to know you can count on holiday scratch-offs from the Maryland Lottery. Multiply the cheer.
Please play safely and responsibly. I choose VA because they made me whole again. I choose the VA because the VA cares. I choose the VA because they provide seamless care through all stages of life. I choose VA because it helped me with my PTSD. I choose the VA because they make me feel important. I choose VA because they've saved my life. I choose VA because I'm a veteran and I enjoy serving veterans. Choose VA today. For more information, visit va.gov. This winter, be confident in a rugged all-wheel drive Honda SUV. Take control with a reliable CRV, the versatile HRV, the eight passenger pilot, or the adventurous Passport with features like Honda Sensing, magic folding seats in three different driving modes. Now is the best time to buy. Don't miss your chance to get a great deal on your favorite Honda SUV. See your local Honda dealer and take on winter today.